Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. A typical arrangement between a horse logger and landowner with timber to harvest, as much as there is a typical arrangement, involves the logger serving as an independent contractor. The logger is self-employed, paying all his or her own expenses and either being paid a flat rate from the landowner to harvest the timber which is then sold by the landowner, or receives a portion of the sale of the logs in lieu of a wage. Regardless of the arrangement, the contract between the two generally lasts only as long as the job, and the logger then looks for his or her next job. Ben Burgess of Russell Springs, Kentucky, and Sam Tackett of Stinking Creek, Tennessee, each had been operating their own independent horse logging business for years when they accepted an offer from Berea College of Berea, Kentucky to work in the college's woods as employees of the college. The advantages to both parties are enormous. The college is able to implement long-term a forest management plan that enhances the value of their resource as the horse loggers selectively harvest worst first timber, allowing higher grade and more environmentally appropriate trees to thrive, all while protecting the fragile ecosystem of the forest, which in turn safeguards the four reservoirs that provide the city of Berea most of its drinking water. For the loggers, they're able to practice environmentally sensitive logging without having to worry about removing enough board feed every day to pay their bills. And then when I met the Heal and Harvest and seen what they were doing with the Biological Woodsman program, yeah. see, I already knew how to, by that time, I already knew how to cut timber and drive stock and log. And had an old side loader truck. But that increased my silviculture and, you know, what tree to take and why and how. And you can walk right up there where them horses is tied, go around that water plant up that hill where we worked. And look at all that good young white oak about that big stand there and ain't a skint mark on it nowhere. Of course, now Ben cut that timber and I pulled it out, but, you know, we didn't tire nothing up when we did it. Yeah. And someday my kid or my grandkid or your kid or your grandkid can go back and they can drink that water out of that reservoir right down there. It ain't full of mud. Right. They can or go back and cut that timber or use it for carbon storage or whatever. Our goal is to make as much money for the school as we can. Our, that's, it's our job to sell the, the logs and the lumber for them. Just like if we were actually contracting, right. it's the same idea that we can Call in other bidders. We can say who who we want to bid on what. We keep up the really good logs, sell them to the highest bidder, and then just try to get rid of the lower grades as best we can. We saw some ties ourselves because that's the best you can do with low grades is to make a tie. So we've got the mill. So on rainy days we'll set up and saw ties out.
You know, of course, where you broke that chain, that's where they all want to attach it. Yeah. Right there on that big link. Yeah. That surprised my when I broke that chain with them horses, though. Gee. We never had any meals that could do that. Gee. 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 Was it exciting when it happened? No. no. They stopped right off Did the bat. Gee. Yeah. Now, that's one thing about these horses. They just stay so calm. Right. If, if they get in a bind and you say, whoa, it's just like they know. Come up. I'll tell you how I got hooked. I saw a picture of Jason and that, that one team of wedge and tong. In winter time, they're kind of bowed up. It just is a great picture. And I thought, wow, I didn't know this, anything like that existed. And then I got to reading about it. And I've always had a, an interest in the woods. Right. And I've always been disgusted to see some of the logging jobs that are going on that have just destroyed the land, you know, there's got to be a better way to, to get the products we need and take care of the woods, so. Come up. Come up. Luke. Come up. E. Max. Jason will do a cradle hitch with two chains. Yeah. And uh, we do what we call a jack grab. Comes from an old man. Well, I learned it from Ronnie Tucker, who learned it from an old man named Jack Strode. Oh, yeah. So that's why we call it a jack grab. Okay. It's because it hangs back to Jack Strode. Jack's daddy made a living log. Is that right? Yeah. Jack was a machinist by trade. I did not know that. He's quick to ship them, and they're good. It's a good grab. And we beat the time out of them. They've held up good. A new set. You got one of each. Thank you. 
Just a little bit that the log will roll and bring you down the hill? Well, it, it'll get stopped I've by that. that. Yeah, it won't roll with that, right. But uh, I put that PV in there to get unhooked. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I'm just not getting grabs on this. I can knock them. My hammer is too pointed. So it don't hit it square. It slides yeah. off. Well, it's got too keen of a point. I see. And uh, that old soft wood, it buries into the wood. That time I practiced driving grab too. When I drove them every day, I was pretty good at it. <coughs> oh, man. Duke. Oh, Duke. Smith was here, he'd take his mules and back into that log, push it over the hill. Paul Smith? Yeah. That should that should be something that you could look at and say, okay, well, what if we what if we for the next 50 years put dozer trails everywhere right. to get the timber out? We can right. actually, we're going to spend more money to get Filter. the water filtered. The lakes are going to have a shorter lifespan, and that's millions of dollars to redo. You could really lose a lot of money doing what somebody in the short term is saying makes you more money. Right. You have to look at the big picture right. and, and factor it all in, I think. They're a great team together. They they like are. each other and work good together and they're just both so knowledgeable and conscientious about what they do and normally we do the you know the worst first logging and we try to keep you know really good quality trees even if they're really valuable like right. leave them but right we've had a couple opportunities to for high profile projects where we got white oak logs really good white oak logs for ship restoration projects sure the mayflower too being the first one and then more recently the uh the uh western flyer which was steinbeck's ship on the okay. west coast so okay when an opportunity like that comes along you know to to find that last white oak you know um i, I marked some trees and it he was keeping track of what we needed to, to uh, supply the, the, the Western Flyer project, and I went out there 
and you know most he didn't just cut all the trees I marked assuming that they were all needed he was actually scaling them as he went and whenever the board footage was reached he quit cutting them which just left one tree yeah but it was you know, it was one right. of these perfect white oaks and it was an easy to get to tree yeah and this is when they were they were on contract so he passed up wow an easy to get to tree that was worth a lot of money that would have meant that you know he made some pretty good money for a, a short easy skid right and uh after we had loaded the logs and stuff i did a walk through and i saw that tree was still there and i'm like uh well i guess we didn't need that when i marked one too many didn't we and he's like He's like, yeah, I had it, I had it figured up, and you know, I, I decided that even if you wanted me to cut that, I wasn't going to because this is, this is showing people that we really mean what we say. Yeah. And that tree doesn't fit the criteria to cut right now, and if something does happen to it, it's right there, easy to see, and spot, and then we'll cut it. That's smart. That's and, really uh, smart. I said, man, you are really walking the talk. That's exact. That's. And that's the kind of person, you know, if they'll do that right. when they're on, they're not, they don't have to, you know, they're right, going right. to do it when they're right on salary. Right, yeah. right, right. Yep. Yeah. Try to take as much as you can each trip. And like I was going to cut it 18 at first. You know, we could get more. It wasn't that heavy. They could do that, but our landing area won't let us have them that long. So we have them go ahead and cut them short. But if you got to go with what the horses can stand, you know, what is comfortable for them to maintain all day. You can't just pound them every load. But if you just take a little bitty pole every time. You can let. You don't get anything done. No, you can't and get you any footage. The ground more. Yeah. You're, you're spending more time. You're burning about the, the same energy right. to get very well, little production done. Right. It's that was those two logs there were nothing for those horses. You know they could, if they were seasoned, we would put more on them than that. But you know they're green, young, so we're taking it easy and trying to let them have a good day in the woods. And, but a lot of people. A lot of people do one or the other. They kind of go to extremes. They either load them so heavy and just wear them out the first two. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. The biggest criticism that I've had is because you've known me
for a long time as being someone who has invested my entire life into this culture, into these horses, is that it's too labor intensive. Well, I'm not going to apologize for the job creational aspect of animal power. It's a benefit that people are needed to do this work. Uh, what else, uh, it's like my, our friend Wendell says in, in his book, Another Turn of the Crank, what are people for? You know, here's where people can be useful parts of, uh, of uh, uh, taking care of their own needs, uh, uh, m mitigating the impacts of climate change by sequestering more carbon by growing. The work that these men are doing at Berea College uh, is, uh, is so beneficial to the environment as a whole uh, the enhancement of the ecological services of the forest that is a result from their improving it through worst first single tree selection is, is unquantified. We don't really know right now how beneficial that is, but it is surely undeniably beneficial. And the day will come in the future where we do quantify that, and then, then the most environmentally sensitive part of all of us will become a part of what's going on to where uh, these men will prove that it's worth whatever it takes to do the right thing to the forest. And so you're here uh, as a rural heritage magazine, but you're actually giving a little glimpse of the future potential that is beneficial for, for all of humankind. And I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to have been a, been a, a person who's thought about it this way for a long time. And I have my own reasons and own path to getting to that place. Uh, but I'm comfortable being here, and I'm made even more comfortable in the company of, uh, of other people who feel the same way and are willing to invest their lives into the same uh, reward system, uh, including publications, including Rural Heritage. has been a supporter of my work forever, from your father coming and putting me on the Draft Horse Journal uh, back in the 80s, you know. Uh, so there's cultural continuity in what's going on here today, and thank you for being here. Be sure to come back next week when we spend more time with Ben and Sam, this time talking about the Suffolk Punch horses they use in the woods. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.